Welcome to Attuned for Wholeness with me, Lisa Penny. Life is full of uncertainty, confusion, and heartache. It gets hard to manage at times. This show will combine your lived experience with self-awareness and prayer to help you navigate through those tough times. You know, those ones that keep you from living in a place of true harmony, fully attuned to your body, your soul, and your spirit. Attunement is a spiritual practice of getting emotionally honest and connecting with God so we can recover from daily life and our souls can go back to a place of rest. Together, we'll move away from the unhealthy ways of coping that temporarily alleviate the pressure, but ultimately leave us feeling more disconnected from our true selves. A tune for wholeness with me, Lisa Finney, starts now. Well, hello everyone. I am glad to be back with all of you. Today, we're going to talk about when it's time to heal. How do you know when you need to take time out for your soul to recover and for you to come back to being your best self or at least a better version of yourself? And it's perfect timing because I just came back from conducting a soul care retreat with Amanda Soa, who was my guest last week. And this past weekend, we took um, six women away and we just actually let them unpack all the stuff that has been clogging up their soul so that they could unburden themselves and receive fresh manna. And you know what that's like. I mean, we all go through it. So I'm going to take a minute and just talk about How do you know when it's time to heal? For me, it was midlife. For other people, it might be after a big breakup. It might be that they gave so much of themselves away that they lost themselves in the process. It could be other kinds of losses that really have the ability to rock your world. It could be several things that have accumulated. And because you haven't taken the time to process them, boom, now you're just falling apart or unable to cope. Here's what I mean by not being able to cope. You're cranky. You lost sight of things that are fun to do. You don't necessarily have much time for um, anything other than work. You zone out on the TV. Um, Maybe you just sit down and drink too much and numb away the pain. So those are a few ways you know that you need to take some time for yourself to unpack everything that you've been avoiding looking at and heal. And the way I do it is through attunement, uh, which is why I have the name of this show, Attuned for Wholeness. Because you can do this for the rest of your life. Um, Healing isn't a one-off. It's not a weekend retreat. It's a good place to start, but it's not a weekend retreat. It's not a seminar. It's a lifestyle. It's knowing when you're dysregulated and saying, ooh, I need to I need to take care of my own soul right now. I need to take care of my own emotions right now. And I need to learn the art of how to take care of them regularly. So regularly doesn't necessarily mean every day. Because if you had a great day, you don't have anything to process. You're celebrating. You're enjoying life. But when something comes up unexpected, um, I don't know, a betrayal or something is planned and it still hurts like your kids moving out. That's when you need to take time for yourself because we have to be retuned. And that's the best way to put it. So these ladies that went away on a retreat and they needed a chance to be retuned. And let me tell you, when this, when this retreat started, We said we were going to do a vulnerability icebreaker. 
Well, what ended up happening was that several of them did the big ugly cry. And then the next day, they all got some individual coaching and there was a whole lot of other things involved. But the big infilling, the big switch, we went from emptying out to getting replenished was when they started doing therapeutic art practices that allowed them to put um, on a canvas the life they would like to move into. And they started to laugh and they were um, had smiles on their face. And when the whole weekend was over, they didn't want to leave each other. They came in strangers, but they left as friends. They hugged and they cried together. And they st still, days later, they're chatting it up through Messenger. Love the fact that you can do stuff like that. Uh, you don't have to make, send emails anymore or pick up the phone. You can just send messages. How nice is that? Especially when life is busy. Okay. So here's another way, you know, life has gotten too busy and nothing was really bad. You're dysregulated. You're exhausted. You need to retune. So big or small, you got to take care of your soul. I'll tell you another time when you need to heal after church hurts. Lots of church hurts right now. Um, people who have lost their faith because they don't trust their leaders. People who have been hurt by things that are um, cruel and more hurtful than helpful. You kind of need to step back and say, wait, what is it that I really believe in? What is it that God says about me? Um, because life people are imperfect. But it's an opportunity to connect with God at any point in time. We don't have to hold on to it. We have to process through it. And to process through it, it means you have to Feel your feelings. You just can't keep powering through, and nor can you use logic and reason to deal with emotional pain. It just doesn't work that way. You deal with emotional pain by feeling your feelings and presenting them to God, letting go of them. And there's so many ways you can let go of them, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, what's another way? Um, transitions. So you moved away. And you're missing all your friends and your family. That's another time that you know you need to be retuned and you need some healing because that's a grieving process. And if you pay attention on my Facebook page, I talk about grief. Just today, I posted about it, actually. Um, the death of a dream often requires us to step back and receive healing. So maybe it's a dream for a business. Maybe you had your ideal job and lost it. Um, maybe you were promised something and they didn't come through for you for lots of reasons. And we don't like to call that healing, but how does it hurt? These things need to be felt, processed, and let go. And the best way I have found to process is through attunement. Wait, what is my body telling me? My body is all constricted. My shoulders are aching. My jaws are tight. My stomach is bothering me. Oh, maybe I need to process something. And when I start getting quiet, I kind of figure out what I need to process. And you will too. You'll sit there quietly and guess what? Your mind will spin and your mind will race with circling thoughts. Those are things that need your attention. I'm very, very used to mind racing. Um, I spent seven years with anxiety and depression and a lot of mind racing. Sometimes 
those are traumatic events that are attached to it. And we are desperately trying to make sense of them. You can't, you have to process. And the way I do it is by picking the low hanging fruit. Uh, low hanging fruit to me is whatever is getting my attention. I don't necessarily look at a big overall problem. I might look at, you know, something within the problem. I don't look at multiple problems and multiple hurts all at one time. I pick one and I focus in on that. And then after I pay attention to my body and focus in on one event, then I ask myself, what's the emotions that I'm feeling? Because you have to feel your feelings. And naming it's not enough. Most people say, happy, mad, sad, glad. Naming it might involve, I feel betrayed. I feel alone. When you name it and you're more specific about it, it helps to narrow things down. That's the low hanging fruit. And that's painful, but it's easy. So then you're not just looking at the problem, you're looking at how you're feeling. And that's an important part of attunement, noticing the emotions that are coming up from deep within your soul or the mind racing thoughts that are causing all the pain in your body. Um, then I go a step further because I know that emotions are often driven by thoughts. And those thoughts can be very triggering. So using this as an example, a woman is married for 35 years and all of a sudden her husband tells her, yeah, I don't think I'm in love with you anymore. She's going to need to heal emotionally because now her identity is affected and she's desperately trying to figure out what did I miss that made him so unhappy? What could I have done differently? Well, the story she may tell herself if she doesn't process is something's wrong with me. I'm not lovable. I'm never going to have another man love me ever again. And those stories follow you they can dictate your decision. So if I'm afraid that I'm going to get rejected when I start dating, I might avoid dating. But if I process the story that I'm telling myself, the thoughts behind the emotions and drill down to the negative belief. So that was a negative identity belief that I have just described. Um, a negative identity belief is it's core to who you are. And oftentimes we don't like to call it destructive, but it destroys part of your God-given nature. If you tell yourself you're unlovable, you will sort of act that way. And it's not that you'll do something, but you'll shy away from people. You'll be afraid to engage people, make new friends, or date, as, as I stated just a moment ago. So drilling down to the place of what's the story I'm telling myself, what is the negative belief, um, it's really important. Here's another thing. If your negative belief isn't about yourself, it might be about a man, men. Men aren't trustworthy. And a good way to know your story that you're telling yourself is to pay attention to what you're saying or thinking. This always happens to me. I can't trust people ever. I'm always the one who gets hurt. Those kinds of things are always and never statements. Those are often part of our negative belief system. Okay, so now you've gone from a problem to noticing how your body needs attuned because the stress or trauma um, is actually ah, a 
attached to your body and it needs to be processed and let go. And then you go on to um, pinpointing the emotions, pinpointing the beliefs. Let's now move on to how am I coping with that? Oh, I'm coming home after work and I'm eating a pint of ice cream instead of making myself dinner. I am, um, <clears throat> I'm not going to church anymore because, you know, Christians sometimes hurt me more than help me. Um, but you still love God and you're stuck and you don't know where can I, where can I find a spiritual community? So how am I coping? Oh, I'm coping by withdrawing. I'm coping by protecting myself. And, and let me be clear. There is a time to protect yourself in the face of abuse. You protect yourself in the face of verbal um, altercations. You somehow survive through it by protecting yourself, by getting quiet or um, just by minimizing the conversation. But when the threat is over, if you find that you're still doing that, you're coping, you're stuck. And it's an opportunity for you to go, hmm, something's out of attuned tunement here. I need to get back to that place of being body, soul, spirit attuned. So this is the next step. You know what, God? I've been thinking that I'm not very lovable. What do you say about that? What do you think about what I'm believing? Who do you say I am? And then you listen. So you're having a conversation with God. It's not like the formal prayers. It's a conversation. And in that conversation, as you listen, like friends do, like when I am with a client, I listen to them. And then when it's my turn to talk, they listen to me. When you ask God a question and then you get quiet and you listen and you tune in with your spiritual senses of the eyes of your heart, the ears of your heart, and the felt sense of his presence and the message that it's conveying, you're going to find that he has a different perspective. And his perspective, once you hear it, recognize it, and, and take it in, shifts everything. The stress comes off of you. You breathe a sigh of relief. Your heart starts just, you know, beating regularly. You're less anxious. You're more confident. And you're more confident that God loves you. He cares about you. And he wants the best for you. So all those things are really quite important. And um, as important as they are, it's still, it's not a one-off. You can do this for the rest of your life. It's how I live my life. It's the most beautiful way to live, quite honestly, just in having conversation with God. It's less about religion and much more about um, relationship. I use that word carefully because lots of Christians talk about relationship, but this really is about relationship. So let me, let, let's go on a little bit further. Here's another way you know it's time to get attuned or to heal. You find yourself being more snappy. It might not be a big problem, but it's still an opportunity to step back and say, what's my body need? What's my heart need? What's my soul need? And... On a larger scale, you might find yourself, your world getting a little smaller. So let's go back to the idea of being unlovable. If you 
start to believe or think subconsciously that you're unlovable, you will make less of an effort to go out and socialize. You might also um, come home and veg out on the TV because it's safer. And all those things that you could be out doing or something you say, yeah, I'll do that later. I'll get around to that. That would be nice to do someday. Why not today? If you're stuck, you can do business with God. If you say, I don't know how to do this kind of thing, I get that. I didn't know how to do it at one point either. Um, but I will tell you that you can coach with me and I'll teach you these principles. Or you can get the Attuned app that's due out in the spring and it will guide you through um, your problem, your emotions, the story you're telling yourself, finding out and figuring out the ways you're coping to avoid pain, figuring out what your heart really needs, and then having questions in the app that are really more like prompts so that you can talk to God. That is going to be a game changer for people because especially for people with church hurt that quit going to church, but still love God and just are trying to figure things out. This is a way to stay connected and it's a way to process the pain so that you can become confident enough to take steps to make your life better again. Life is hard. We get kicked in the teeth. It takes the wind out of us. And when that happens, if we don't recover, if we don't take time to tune in and tune up to heal, it clings to us subtly and we don't even realize it. One of my best friends was at a point in her life where her world should have been expanding because her kids were older and she had more freedom. But instead of that, she found herself still sort of mm, being apprehensive about reconnecting with people from her past or getting a job. Um, and what she realized was my small world is a result of my pain. And so a few years later, her and I got together and um, she and I started um, working through some of that. She's older now and her life is good. Does it still have problems? Yeah but it's much better life for her. Things that she thought were never going to change have changed because some of that is um, relational problems that get resolved. Some of that is her, what we like to say is stinking thinking, right? But her life is better. And the way I like to think of that is, uh, from the book of Job. You know how Job went through a bunch of problems. He had this really great life and then it went really bad. And in the very last chapter, it says the latter half of Job's life was more greatly blessed than the former. So think about what you're going through now. It might be hard. And you can say this too shall pass, but it might not pass if you don't do the work around the issue to get past it. Spiritual attunement and the attuned app and coaching and soul care retreats are ways to help you get past it. And I want you to do that for yourself. I'm not here on this podcast to make a million dollars. I'm here on this podcast to spread a message of emotional wholeness that's available for all of us, 
for the Christian, for the unbeliever, for the hurt believer, for the questioning person, there's hope and there's healing. And so that's how I'm going to leave you today. Do you want to be whole? Do you want to have a better life? Do you want to develop some skills that are going to help you live that better life? And maybe it's time for healing. And so I'm going to say thank you for listening. It's been my pleasure. Thanks for tuning in to Attuned for Wholeness. I hope you got the tune-up you needed today. Keep tuning in on the first and third Wednesday of every month at 4.30 Eastern Standard Time and 3.30 Central Time on ttm.com for more conversations around caring for our emotional health and spiritual well-being. I'd like to invite you to consider becoming a resiliency coach to develop the skills that will help others heal and bounce back quicker from negative events. Or maybe you're someone who's looking for a holistic and spiritual path to move through anxiety and unresolved trauma. For both of these resources, visit my website at www.wholenessandpractice.com. And thank you for listening to Attuned for Wholeness on Transformation Talk Radio.